Goes, mind that bird, the derby winner in, followed by number eight, General Quarters, now in the gate under Julian Leperu. There's Love Gov, the long shot, trained by D. Wayne Lucas. And there's the star of the day so far, Rachel Alexandra, who is going to the post as the 9-5 to five favorite now. And uh, Calvin Burrell getting all those goggles set just right, and he'll be flicking, flipping them down off his eyes as the race unfolds. 13 horses going a mile in 316th in the 134th Preakness Stakes. And here with the call, Tom Durkin. Ready? Rachel Ready? Alexandra Don't moving into no post shot. position number 13. There she is, the captivating filly with the intrepid Calvin Barella board. Taking on the boys in the 134th running of the Preakness. They are in the gate. Big drama. A little skittish in the starting gate there. He's settled down now. Whoa, oh, and he bucked off the rider. He bucked off Johnny Velasquez. But to his credit, mind that bird who's in the stall right next to him, just as cool as a cucumber. Now they're going to back the horse out of the starting gate to get him resettled here. Johnny Velasquez was bucked off. He was a little skittish in there. The horse has been in the starting gate for a little while as he had to load in from post position number one. Now, the track veterinarian there, he's on site taking a look at the horse to make sure that he hasn't been injured in any way. Gary, you've been in this position before. Been in this position. Johnny Velasquez getting leg back up here. Horse a little bit sweaty, but it looks like we're going to have a start, start Tom. The ground was run only once this year and did not like standing that Long time in the starting gate. Now back in. Tom? Ready for the start. And they're off on the Preakness. Big drama. Gets off to a good start. Musk and Matt is there too. Here's Rachel Alexander on the far outside. Pioneer of the Nile. And Freezing Fire has some early speed too. So they pass by for the first time. And Velasquez is taking big drama well out into the track. Farthest out though, it is Rachel Alexandra. Be taken a bit wide going into that first turn here. Fishing Fire is third. Pioneer of the Nile is fourth. Take the point. Is fifth on the outside as the filly gets floated wide. Then Papa Clem is now sixth toward the rail. General Quarters is seventh and Musket Man is eighth. And then it's toned it down as winning ninth on the outside. A break of five back to Wayne Lucas's two runners. Flying Private and Love Gov. And they're followed by Terrain. And mind that bird. The Derby winner. Where he was in the Derby at this point. He is last. Now about 12 lengths from the lead. Strong enough is the pace for him to run into. It was a 46 and 3 half mile, and the Phillies in front. She's in front early on here. Rachel Alexandra narrowly, big trauma. Still going to stay right with her all the way. Freeze and fire looms back in third position. Half mile to go in the Preakness. On the inside, Papa Clem runs along in for it. Far outside, Pioneer of the Nile. Now running in fifth from the back of the pack, mind that bird. 13th, 12th. 11, and he's 10th now, and there's three furlongs to go. Mind that bird beginning to roll. Around the far turn here at Pimlico, Rachel Alexandra, the leader, the leader by two as the field turns for home. Big drama running in second now. Mind that bird looks for a way through, and he had to go way outside for it. Musket man toward the inside. Rachel Alexandra's in front with one furlong to go. Musket man moves to second. Mind that bird is third on the outside. The filly trying to hold on. She's clear by three. Mind that bird runs at her late. Here's the wire. And the filly did it. Rachel Alexandra has defeated the Kentucky Derby winner. Mind that bird by three quarters of a length. Musket Man was third. The final time was 155 flat. A magnificent victory. An exquisite filly. And a thrill to see. She is a super filly. Rachel Alexandra. The first filly to win the Preakness Stakes in 85 years. And only the fifth overall. And she did it by holding off the on-charging Kentucky Derby winner, Mind That Bird. The two stars of the show hooking up in the final 16th of a mile in a thrilling finish to the Preakness Stakes. There's Mind That Bird, who was a game on-charging second under the new rider.
Mike Smith. He's making a huge run around the turn. He found the gap that he needed to. Chip Woolley a little disappointed there. He shouldn't be disappointed. He's done a great job, and the horse ran a great race, Tom. Well, we can say one thing about the one-two finishers, Gary Stevens. They both are for real. They are both for real, and Calvin knows his job. <laughs> well, Donna Brothers has pulled alongside Calvin Burrell and Rachel Alexandra. Take it, Donna. I have to let uh, Mike Smith and Calvin complete their conversation. Mike, he just said everybody stayed on the rail. Nobody would get off. So apparently he didn't get through. Everything went perfectly for you. Yeah. Two weeks ago, amazing finish for you on Mind That Bird. This time you had to be looking over your shoulder. Did you see him coming on the outside? Yeah, I seen him coming, but I had him spotted, baby. <laughs> By three jumps on the wire, I hung on my stick and just galloped in, you know. So did you feel like you had it won the whole time? Yes, ma'am, I did. Believe me, you, when they're going to come and hook her, Head in head, it's gonna take a race horse to beat her. Seem a bit more. There's one in the world to beat her. Okay. Well, you seem a bit more subdued over this victory than in the Derby. Did you just feel like you knew this one was gonna happen? Yes, ma'am. I, like I told you all along, baby, she's the greatest horse I've ever been on in my life. And believe me, bar none, she did not handle the track 110%. And still won. And still won. Now, what about if they decide to run her back in three weeks in the Belmont? What you've been familiar with that track? What about a mile and a quarter? I mean, a mile and a half for her. I don't. I. I, t I I'm not worried about nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that up to Mr. Jackson and Steve. And I just want to thank Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Kentucky, and I love you, Mom and Dad. And thank you for the little boy that got cancer here. We're gonna try to help him. Okay. Congratulations, Calvin. Tradition painting the weather vane in the owner's colors began a hundred years ago. Already underway. A hundred years ago, they started that when the Preakness returned to Maryland after being run in New York for 16 years. Calvin Burrell once again basking in the limelight. How did he do it, Gary? In the overhead view, once again, Mike Smith picking his way through here. He was hoping things would open up. On the inside, as you can see up here, absolutely nowhere to go. Rachel Alexander, not a stronger path. She was three wide throughout the race, very similar to what she was in the Kentucky Oaks. But got about an eight length advantage here. She closed, they closed that up to about a length, I guess, yeah, at length, the end here. The final margin of victory. So I mean, they're slowly and surely, but the distance of the race was a mile and three sixteenths, not a mile and three sixteenths, and two strides, only the mile and three sixteenths. <laughs> And for the presentation, let's go to Bob Costas. All right, Tom, this, of course, is Jess Jackson, the new owner of Rachel Alexandra. The price variously estimated between seven and a half and ten million. He got at least a good portion of it back today. Martin O'Malley, the governor of the state of Maryland, is here, along with Steve McCasey, COO of Magna Entertainment. And Governor O'Malley will make the presentation. The Woodland vase is over there. It's heavy and it's slippery. We take no chances. We go with the replica. Bob, thank you very much. It's uh, my honor, Mr. Jackson, on behalf of the Maryland Jockey Club and the people of the state of Maryland to present to you the most coveted trophy in all of sport, the Woodlawn Vaughs for the winning of the Preakness Stakes. Congratulations. It's very much appreciated. It, it's, a, it's a part. Oh, it, this, this represents uh, the finest in racing and in breeding, and Maryland has led the way all through the decades. So thank you very much. Rachel won it. I'm delighted. Mr. Jackson, obviously there's a period of evaluation, but is your gut feeling now that uh, Rachel Alexandra goes again in the Belmont? Well, we know she can run against Colts, and we'd have to evaluate that against the other alternatives for her own health and her own uh, career. But, uh, yes, we will seriously consider the Belmont. That doesn't mean we're committed at all. Given your druthers, you'd like to see it happen, though. I'd love to have Rachel run and become a champion on a horse rather than just a champion filly. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to you and your wife, Barbara, and your entire family, much of which is gathered around you. Let's go over to Mike Battaglia, who has Rachel Alexandra's new jockey and new trainer. All right. Thank you, Bob. And with Calvin Burrell and Steve Asmussen, and Steve, we'll talk to you first. When you walked up here on the stand and I said congratulations, all you could say was, wow. Uh, how good is this film? Well, it's a tremendous ride. You know, we've had the Philly 10 days. Hal Wiggins did an excellent job with her. I can't say enough about everything that they had done. We just got here, got out of her way. Calvin knows her best. She gave a dream run. But uh, what an amazing filly to accomplish what she has. She really is amazing. And Calvin, you kind of went out on a limb. You almost guaranteed this win. You told everybody that would listen, she's going to win. 
Yes, sir. I mean, I, I, like I said, you know, I think she's the greatest horse in the country right now. And um, Colt, Philly, you know, boy, whatever. <laughs> you know, she's just an amazing Philly. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to thank Mr. Jackson, Steve, for the opportunity to keep me on this Philly because she's every jock's dream horse. She really is. And, you know, mind that bird, the Derby winner, was really making a run at you. We'll take a look at the replay here. Tell us what you were thinking when Rachel Alexandra made the lead like that. I figure you knew mind that bird was coming. Yeah, I knew he'd be coming, you know. And uh, but I, when she, when he ran up to me about, I guess a length and a half, she kind of dug in a little bit, you know. But my filly was kind of struggling at the end there. Uh, it tracks a little deep, I think, because of the dryness. You know, I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe he thought it was going to rain or something, but uh, it was very, very dry. And she went to struggling the last 40 yards. And really, that's unusual for her. You've never had to hit this filly. No. Were you a little concerned with that? No, sir. I mean, I uh, I hit her twice left-handed, and then I just, you know, and when he ran up to me, she she took off again, you know. And you say she didn't really handle the track. If she didn't handle the track, what's she going to do when she gets one she likes? It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable because, I mean, I you know, you understand that she was kind of struggling a little bit. Every time I'd ask her a little bit more, she couldn't get into the rhythm like I know she can, you know, when she's running New Orleans on a hard, fast track or a Churchill. And uh, believe me, she, she's an amazing filly, and uh, God knows how good she is.